If you're new, please know this is a Kingdom Hearts video. It's built off my Dream Drop Disca series, so please watch all of that before this one. At the very least, watch or rewatch my video on portals because that has a lot of context for this one. While I could be wrong, as of this moment, I just don't believe Shibuya is another world line. Not because of contradicting evidence, but the current lack of supporting evidence. I propose the possibility that Shibuya, and by proximity extension Shinjuku, is your typical Kingdom Hearts world. In Kingdom Hearts 3's Ultimania, Nomura is asked if Sora is in the world of The World Ends With You. His answer, how I understand it, is explaining yes, but it's not the real world that you and I live in. It's still a fictional Shibuya, similar to Paris being La Cité des Cloches and the Country of Musketeers, or London being a part of Neverland. To compare what I think of Shibuya, let's look at how Kingdom Hearts created a unique sense of world order for Disney worlds. Olympus's underworld and heaven are limited only to Olympus. They don't seem to rule over every world because they never interact with other worlds. And when we look at Monstropolis, Kingdom Hearts took advantage of Monsters Inc.'s doors leading to other worlds, as well as emotions powering machines like the Gummy Ship. Taking this similar pattern of writing, it's logical to think Shibuya will be similar. That its underground in Reaper's game is only limited to that world and that Kingdom Hearts may twist any of the World Ends With You's original logic to better fit the Kingdom Hearts universe. Like Final Fantasy, I still believe Kingdom Hearts has its own version of The World Ends With You, rather than Kingdom Hearts being canon to the original game's story. I know a lot of fans disagree with me, and I respect that, but if Nomura is not canonically connecting the two after all, then we need another possible explanation on what's happening with Shibuya. So let's get into it. In Dream Drop Distance, Joshua says something happened in the gang's world that made them disappear. At first this sounds like the usual world ends with you gig, where they died and had to play the game for a chance to be revived. However, Joshua having to find refuge for them in Traverse Town, which appears to people when their world falls to darkness, tells me that Shibuya was completely out of Joshua's access, as in Shibuya's world as a whole got destroyed. In The World Ends With You Final Remix, Hanakoma writes about an event called the Inversion that occurred in Shinjuku in his secret reports from a new day. To be quite honest, I'm not nearly as well versed in The World Ends With You lore as I am Kingdom Hearts, and I don't really know what to make of the Inversion. But entire buildings disintegrate, so it doesn't look too good. I'm willing to guess that if Tokyo truly is a sleeping world in Kingdom Hearts, that there's a chance that the inversion may be the reason for its fall. And that would explain why Shinjuku itself is just as involved with Kingdom Hearts 3's secret ending as Shibuya is. Earlier, I mentioned Nomura explaining how the Shibuya Sora arrives in isn't the real-life Shibuya. Later, in the same answer, when he says Sora's promise to see the gang in Shibuya is not connected to Kingdom Hearts 3's secret ending, that makes sense to me. First of all, Sora's side of the secret ending doesn't seem like it literally happened since it contradicts limit cut cutscenes. And that's not actually strange since there are a lot of things in previous secret endings that never literally happen. But even if, by some chance, Sora does wake up in Shibuya and meets the gang again, if Shibuya is a sleeping world, then this still wouldn't be connected to their promise in Dream Drop Distance, because the gang Sora would meet would only be figments of Shibuya's dream. They wouldn't remember Sora at all, like we see with the figments of other sleeping world's dreams. But I could be wrong in the case that it was someone from Shibuya who said to save Sora, which we'll explore later. There's another detail that leads me to believe Shibuya and Shinjuku are involved with the Realm of Sleep, so let's explore that now. We 
are going to digress for a bit, but stay with me, okay? This particular section is not 100% consistent and you'll see why, so I would love any feedback. In my video about Sora and Riku's appearances in time travel, I end the video stating how there may be one other key factor that points to Destiny Islands in the beginning of Dream Drop Distance being a dream. I ended the video there because honestly, I just wanted that video to end, so I'll finally get to that now. In Dream Drop Distance, there may be a pattern of how one wakes up in the realm of sleep, laying down versus standing. When Riku dives into Sora's Station of Awakening from the Awake Mysterious Tower, he's face down. But later, when he transitions to Sora's Dream Destiny Islands, he's standing. So it seems, when someone first enters the realm of sleep, they wake up lying down. But if their previous location was also in the realm of sleep, they wake up standing. We see this when Sora wakes up lying down on Dream Traverse Town's ground after entering from the Awake Mysterious Tower. And while we don't clearly see them wake up from various sleeping worlds of the exam, there are a few far away shots of them standing still, so I assume that's how they woke up. The only Disney World we clearly see is the grid, so that may support it being a sleeping world. Or it's only to mimic the film, I can't say for sure. But with Sora and Riku waking up standing when they first arrive in Dream Traverse Town, this leads me to believe the world they were previously in, Destiny Islands, was also only a dream. Now, like I said, this is not 100% consistent from what I can tell. When Sora and Riku enter the dream world that never was, they both glide down. I don't think it's a result of them diving, since we dive throughout Dream Drop Distance and never see them glide until here. I know that Nomura says in Dream Drops Ultimania that the worlds in the rift between darkness and light have different rules than other worlds. I don't like to reference old interviews because they're vulnerable to retconning, but I'm mentioning this to save people the time of commenting about it. Maybe that is why they glide into the dream world that never was. I genuinely don't know. Kingdom Hearts 3 and other titles seem to also break this consistency. Sora diving into the Station of Awakening in Kingdom Hearts 1 and 3, he does not wake up lying down like Riku does. There's also the Guardians of Light standing and not starting off asleep to begin with when they enter Scala and Kylum via both portal and sleeping keyhole. Maybe just because you enter the realm of sleep doesn't mean you yourself are asleep, like the Xehanorts in Dream Drop Distance. So to actually wake up, standing up or lying down, you have to be asleep in some sense? I don't have sure answers for these inconsistencies, but even so, I do think that the pattern is somewhat still around, because in Kingdom Hearts 3 Secret Ending, both Sora and Riku wake up from lying on the ground. For Sora, him waking up on the ground does serve as a visual parallel to Neku waking up in The World Ends With You. And like I said earlier, it may not be literally canon since it seems to contradict Limit Cut. But nevertheless, in terms of Kingdom Hearts lore, this could be Nomura hinting that Shibuya is indeed a sleeping world. Before Limit Cut came out, I was less sure if Riku was also in the realm of sleep because I wasn't sure if Viram Rex took place in Shinjuku. If it did, then there was a chance Riku only entered Viram Rex's video game, since in Toy Box, Sora lands on his stomach and gets up in a similar manner to Riku. So at the time, I thought Riku could either be in the realm of sleep or a data world. But now that Limit Cut confirms it was only a dream, this makes me all the more confident that how a person wakes up can help us decipher the situation they're in. Let's move on from Shibuya as a world itself and talk about the World Ends With You characters. In my video on portals, I mention how young Xehanort may be responsible for Traverse Town having a duplicate. I received comments explaining that there are two Dream Traverse Towns because one of them is Sora experiencing Joshua's dream, while the other is Riku experiencing Sora's dream. While it is a fact that Riku dove into Sora's dreams, this being the cause of Traverse Town split does not make sense. 
If Traverse Town was split because Riku entered Sora's dreams, then both Neku and Joshua would be puzzled at the sudden disappearance of half their crew. But by the time Sora and Riku arrive, everyone's already been separated for some time. This tells us Traverse Town was split before Sora and Riku individually arrived. Now, also in my Portals video, we went over Joshua bringing the Shibuya gang's remaining dreams to Dream Traverse Town. Let's go over the order of events that young Xehanor interacts with the Shibuya gang based on their dialogue sprinkled throughout Sora and Riku's first visit. 1. Joshua brings everyone's dreams to Dream Traverse Town. 2. Dream Traverse Town is duplicated with the gang split apart. Since Joshua says Traverse Town is currently made up of his dreams, I think the copy occurred after he arrived in Dream Traverse Town. I suspect this is why Cat's graffiti can be seen in both versions. I think it's a figment of Joshua's dream that was integrated into the original Dream Traverse Town, so it copied over when the world was duplicated. Young Xehanort makes a deal with Beat to take down Joshua. I got you now, Joshua! Once I take you down, yo, me and Rhymes is going back where we belong. Ryan giving no indication that Xehanort also talked to her leads me to think Xehanort talked to Beat alone after he was separated from Ryan due to the split worlds. Beat's deal was to take down Joshua. And with Joshua saying, Beat. How many times do we have to go over this? Implying Beats already attempted this before Riku arrived, I'm assuming Beat was the first player Young Xehanort made a deal with. 4. Young Xehanort makes a deal with Neku to retrieve Sora. That guy in the black coat? He said he could send me home. Me and my partner. But I had to bring you to him first. Neku fulfilling his deal immediately when Sora wakes up means Xehanort talked to Neku before Sora arrived. 5. Sora and Riku arrive separately in the two Dream Traverse Towns. 6. Young Xehanort makes a deal with Shiki to retrieve Riku. She told me what's up. Hoodie here set this whole thing up, yo. He promised to send Shiki back to our world and you was the cost of travel. Since young Xehanort did not seem to anticipate Riku diving into Sora's dreams or arriving at the other Dream Traverse Town, How did you get here? By choice or chance? It seems to me Xehanort talked to Shiki only after Riku arrived in her version of the world. Even if the exact order is off, what I'm trying to emphasize is that young Xehanort orchestrated the events between the two Traverse Towns at least during Sora and Riku's first visit. If Traverse Town was truly split after Joshua's arrival, then that means Xehanort purposely split the gang up, making them desperate, then made deals with them to his benefit. It really seems to me Xehanort's goal was to literally divide and conquer, especially with Beat's deal. Young Xehanort seems to see Joshua as a threat and wants him taken out. I highly doubt Xehanort would waste time incentivizing Beat to accomplish something that has no value to him. Anyway, the idea of young Xehanort knowing the world that the gang came from and even promising to return them intrigues me. This could very well be a lie as Xehanort also told Neku he wouldn't hurt Sora, and well we see how that turns out. But I want to keep an eye on the ideas that young Xehanort 1 wants to take down Joshua and two, may know about Shibuya, because I think they're pieces to a greater whole. Let's return back to Shibuya in Shinjuku and finally talk about the, um, heterochromatic elephant in the room. I don't want to discuss every aspect of Yuzora because we would really digress. Let's only discuss his connection to Shinjuku and Shibuya for now. If Shibuya and Shinjuku truly is a sleeping world, then for now, I think Yasora is able to enter this sleeping world via his dreams, just like Riku. But I think Yasora is from a different world himself. 
Him saying in Limit Cut, I accidentally wandered into this place, implies to me he's unfamiliar with Shibuya. Because if Yazora was from this world, I would think he would at least refer to it by name. So I think this visit he mentions to Sora was another dream visit, and that he has the ability to create a projection of that past dream. Now this is purely theoretical, but if Trials meant he got wrapped up into a Dream Reapers game, then it may have been Dream Joshua who told Yazora to save Sora, possibly from fading away, just like he saved the Shibuya gang from fading. However, we already established that the figments of dreams do not retain the memories of their real counterparts. Joshua may be an exception since he's quote, kind of omniscient, but I will need to see it to believe it. For Virenrex the video game, I ironically only just learned that it does in fact take place in Shibuya. So now, I believe that as a typical world, Shibuya, and possibly Shinjuku, had its data copied and placed inside Toy Box as Viram Rex. If Shibuya was somehow copied after it fell asleep, then the technology used may be the same one Yuzora uses to digitally project what I suspect was his dream. It's also interesting that after Shibuya's data was put into Toy Box, that Toy Box itself was also split. The Toy Rex played Viram Rex with Slinky before they got separated, possibly for months depending on his phrasing. And with young Xehanort being involved with the split Toy Boxes and the Shibuya Gang at the split Dream Traverse Towns, following the breadcrumbs, I think he's involved with Shibuya's data copied as Viram Rex as well. What I do not understand though, is the characters and Giga's relationship to Shibuya within the Viram Rex video game. For Giga's, I just can't wrap my head around them naturally being in the real Shibuya. They're not mentioned in the World Ends With You or its Dream Drop Distance version, so it's not like the Reapers game is just down the street to an army of giant killer robots. So for now, I believe Giga's originate from Toy Box itself. It's the only way I can justify Giga's having full-on produced and distributed toys when there aren't any figures of Yazora or his crew. And for Yazora's crew, I genuinely can't even tell you why their data is with Shibuya's if I don't even believe they're from Shibuya in the first place. So what this whole video boils down to, is an interconnected circle of confirmed events and possible theories. Shibuya and Yuzora's crew's data being copied into Toy Box as a video game. Young Xehanort then duplicating Toy Box and possibly being the one who duplicated Dream Traverse Town. The Shibuya gang finding refuge in Dream Traverse Town, which suggests Shibuya and Shinjuku's world may have fallen asleep and Yuzora having the ability to enter this supposed dream world whenever he falls asleep. Overall, while this video addresses an array of different subjects, I hope together they point to the status and future of Shinjuku and Shibuya.